And welcome back. I'm Mabel Jong. You're watching day two of conference coverage at the World Healthcare Congress in Washington, D.C. And here with me is Krista Miranda, Senior VP, Strategic Partnerships and Innovation at Blue Shield of California. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Well, it sounds like you're very busy in your role working with analytics. How integral to your work is, uh, is analytics in ACO work? Uh, it's incredibly central, actually. It's, it's um, probably one of the most key um, areas in the work that we're doing. And it's challenging, too, because we're still across the country in a place where so much of the information exchange is really manual, not much of it is real time. Mm -hmm. So we've really been putting a huge amount of work into um, improving that. And so analytics come into play when we're looking, for example, at practice variation, right? So if you want to to um, ensure that the providers that you're working with are really adhering to best practices. We use data to sort of look at what that variation is across the delivery system. We'll use it for predictive modeling. So not only are we looking at the patients who are, um, have chronic conditions and need a significant amount of health care, but also those that may be teetering on the brink mm -hmm. and making sure that we are intervening and getting them all the care that they need up front. Now you talked a lot about the technology and its role, but what if the providers don't ha aren't as up to date in their technology as you are? So is there some challenges in communing, communicating with one another? There really can be. And I will tell you that the providers that we're working with in California are all across the spectrum sure. in terms yeah. of their degree of sophistication, their mm -hmm. resources, their technological sort of integration. So what we have done in the program that I run is we sort of at the very beginning kind of assess what the current state is and then sort of develop ways to make sure that we're able to exchange information that needs to get exchanged, mm -hmm. right, to optimize care delivery. But in the bigger picture and over the longer term, actually Blue Shield of California and Anthem Blue Cross um, came together a couple years ago to create an organization that we call Calindex and it's really designed to be a public utility and sort of a statewide health information exchange. So the vision, and it's aspirational, we're a ways from it now, but the vision is that Calindex will have um, all payers in California contributing data to it, providers contributing the clinical data to it, et cetera, and that we'll have a longitudinal patient record electronically okay. for all patients in California. We're a ways off from that, but it's, it's the vision. How long do you think that will take? Well, we just signed our first large uh, provider system into Calindex. It's uh, Dignity Health, who mm -hmm. used to be Catholic Healthcare West. We're very excited about that. We're starting off by targeting those providers that we're working with in our accountable care program. And so we expect to have probably in the next couple of years, the majority of those integrated onto Calindex. And I would hope that within three to five years, we'll really have a significant repository of both health plan and provider data. What other hurdles are you needing to address as you really strive towards value-based care? I would say there are a couple. I think the first, and I think one that tends to get minimized sometimes when people are talking about this work, or at least from my perspective, is that to do this well and to really get the kind of results that I think we're going for and that the country is looking for, it takes resources. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we are doing now at Blue Shield is helping some of the smaller organizations that we're working with that don't really have a significant um, pool of funding or resources to really help build some of those clinical programs that we believe will deliver the greatest um, value to the patients that they're serving. So I would say certainly resources are one. I would say another is um, harder to get at, and it sort of is trust, right? I think in the future, in the new world order, we're going to continue to see uh, things that look like the work that we're doing now, which is plant key stakeholders from across the healthcare system really coming together in very different kinds of ways, even organizations who traditionally have been a bit adversarial, right? Coming together to share information that we haven't typically shared, being very transparent with one another. And so I think um, trust can be um, a bit of a hurdle at the outset. We've been very lucky that we've chosen some great partners and we've been able to develop that. But I think that for us to move into the kind of um, new world order that we're going to need to in terms of healthcare delivery, I really think we're going to see lots of stakeholders coming together in very different kinds of ways right. and being very transparent. Right. I was going to ask, since you're in the business of innovation at 
Blue Shield of California, your providers are also out there looking for partnerships themselves, and some of them are becoming uh, insurance companies themselves too. So how do you see that all coming together? And do the plans feel that's almost competition? Well, it certainly is competition, no doubt about it in some markets. I think there's no question. I think what I would say is that we don't see that as hugely concerning because most of these are regional based systems and so there will only be certain types of business that they're really going to be able to go for. I guess what I see it as is more a failure of the collective system, right, to really um, generate the kind of synergistic relationships where providers don't feel they need to go out and become health plans, health plans don't feel like they need to go out mm -hmm. and essentially acquire pieces of the delivery system. And I guess my concern about it is not that it increases competition, which I think in general is a very good thing. What I'm concerned about is that I think it can f enhance or further fragmentation, right, which is what we've got all across the industry. I think it further silos organizations. It creates additional fragmentation. I think it can also create additional layers of cost and inefficiency. But I absolutely think we're going to see more of it for sure. Do you think we're closer to getting more transparency in terms of cost so that the, the end user, the patient, will know more clearly what things are costing? I think we are and I think we have to do more. I will tell you in California we've made some strides in that in that direction over the last couple of years. My own organization has been a very big advocate of that. Mm -hmm. We've got some large um, provider systems who are a bit resistant to that, so you've got to kind of work through um, all of that. And I think some of it, I think, some of the barriers to that, I think, are number one, resistance uh, across you know, many key stakeholders. I think the other thing that makes it challenging is getting aligned on how are we measuring cost, right? There's different ways to look at it, and we've got to figure out, I think at some point, how to um, let the perfect not be the enemy of the good, because people deserve to know what it's mm -hmm. going to cost them when they go in and have a knee replaced, for example. Yes. The public needs to understand the variation um, across both cost and quality. So we are a very big proponent of transparency. Okay, great. And Chris, may I ask you, why do you put this particular event on your calendar? You know, I have done this event many times. I think I've gone to at least three or four of these. And I will tell you, it's a really great collection of different kinds of thought leaders and so it's a great opportunity just to kind of network to talk about the work that we're doing but more importantly to hear about the work that is also going on across the country so it's a great event all right Kristen thank you so much for your time today thank you appreciate it and I'm Mabel Jong thank you for watching more to come